Hello everyone. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the scores that are read in hepatology. So let's start with the first score. The first score is the MELD score. The full form is model for end-stage liver disease. This score helps to prioritize patients for liver transplantation. I'll explain what I mean by this. First, we have to look at the components in this score. So I've tried to arrange all of these components in all the scores in a way that is going to help you remember. So there are two things that are common in all the scores, bilirubin and INR. So these you have to remember. Apart from this, in MEL score, we also check the serum creatinine. Then if the score is more than 17, we will register the patient for liver transplantation. And it also tells us about the three month mortality. Now, what did I mean by prioritizing the patient for liver transplantation? So if there are two patients and both of them have liver damage, but one patient has a score of let's say 18 and the other one has a score of 35 which is very very high and if we have only one liver to give so we will prefer to give the liver to the patient who has more score because his condition is worse. Now there is another score by the name of PELD score which is similar to the MELD score. So the full form here is pediatric end stage liver disease score and again it helps to prioritize pediatric patients and it also helps to assess the severity of liver disease. So as I mentioned before, there are two things that are common, bilirubin and INR. Then there are three things which start with the letter A, abnormal growth, albumin, and age. These five components are in the PELD score. Coming to our next important score, which is called as a child pug or child pew score. It is also known by the other name of child turcot pew score or CTP. In many of the medical reports, you're just going to see CTP. So this means a child pew score. This score also tells us about the severity of cirrhosis in the patients. Again, bilirubin and INR are seen here. Additionally, again, three things which start with the letter A. Ascites, asterixis, and albumin. So here, asterixis tells us about the encephalopathy. Asterixis here I've mentioned only as a way of remembering these components because officially if you'll go and check the components of this score, encephalopathy will be mentioned instead of asterixis. But since asterixis and encephalopathy are related, so you can memorize any of these two. Now we'll have to dive in a little bit more detail about this score and we'll actually have to learn the scoring system since this was asked in the previous exams. We'll even try to attempt a question in the end of this video. So I've mentioned all the five components here and there are three points that we give based on severity. So I'll quickly draw a table and I have a very lame way of remembering this score. If there is any other way that you can remember, so you're more than welcome to do it. Okay, so Billy Rubin, if it is less than two, we will give a score of one. Then just add one. If it is between two and three, we will give a score of two. If it is more than three, we will give a score of three. Now to remember the next two values, just remember a number 7. If the INR is less than 1.7, here the number 7 is coming up, so we will give a score of 1. If it is between 1.7 and 2.3, we will give a score of 2. So 1.7 and 2.3, approximately the difference is 0.7, so you can remember it that way. And if it is more than 2.3, we will give a score of 3. Finally, albumin. If the levels are more than 3.5, we will give a score of 1. If it is between 2.8 and 3.5, again the difference is 0.7 and also both of these numbers are divisible by 7. So we will give a score of 2 and if it is less than 2.8, we will give a score of 3. Now if no encephalopathy is seen, we will give a score of 1. If it is controlled encephalopathy means if we give a drug and it gets controlled, we will give a score of 2. If severe encephalopathy is seen, we will give a score of 3. Ascites is also same, none, controlled and severe. Now based on this, we can divide patients into three classes, class A, class B and class C. If the score comes up to be 5 to 6, we will say class A. If it is between 7 and 9, we will say class B. If it is more than 10, we will say class C. So patients in class B and class C are indicated for liver transplantation. Basically, if anyone has a score of 7 or more, liver transplantation should be given to them. Now coming to our next score, which is the MADRI score. 
It is also known as the Madri's Discriminant Function Score and it is used to assess the severity of alcoholic hepatitis. This one is the easiest to remember because only Billy Rubin and INR, the two things that we've been learning from the start, are measured here. If it is more than 32, it is an indication to start the treatment. Finally, Nasers Index. This tells us about the prognosis in Wilson's disease and if transplantation is needed. So bilirubin and INR again are measured here. Additionally, SGOT is also measured. If it is less than 7, we will give medical treatment. If it is between 7 and 9, we will use our clinical judgment and we will see if the patient needs medical treatment or surgical. But if it is more than 9, then transplantation is definitely to be done. Now let's try to attempt a previous year question which was a bit hard to be honest. What is the child pew score of a patient with bilirubin 2.5, albumin 3, mild ascites, INR of 4 and no encephalopathy? So we will assign a score to each of these. So if the bilirubin is 2.5, it will be a score of 2. If the albumin is 3, it is a score of 2. You can go back and actually take a screenshot of that table and try to memorize it. If the INR is 4, we will give a score of 3. If there is mild ascites, so mild ascites here means controlled ascites, it will be a score of 2. And if no encephalopathy is seen, it will be a score of 1. Now adding all of these, we get a total value of 10, which means class C. So this is how we are going to solve these type of questions. That's it for this video. If you have any doubts, so please leave them in the comments or you can message me on Instagram anytime. The link to my Instagram is in the description. Thank you.